Hi, I'm Jen Gallagher, a garden girl here at Two Peas in a Bucket. I'm going to be teaching the eighth installment of the Stretch Your Sketch class, and this is the sketch that we will be using today. This is a 12 by 12 sketch, and just like we always do, I'm going to stretch this sketch by doing an 8.5 by 11. Those of you that have been watching my videos know that I tend to like 8.5 by 11 um, pages just a little bit better, so hey, that's a great way to stretch your sketch, is to do what you love and to take a sketch and make it your own. So to start with, I've pre-stitched around the two corners of this pattern paper. One reason why I like to pre-stitch is because then if I make a mistake, I just have to tear up the, the paper that I've stitched, not the entire project. And then we're going to add this photo. Uh, we recently had a family reunion, the first one that I have had in oh, years and years and years and my daughter entertained herself by climbing the tree so we're going to do kind of a nature picture today. Um, again I've pre-stitched this bottom piece it's hard to tell on camera. This uh, pattern paper and this pattern paper are from the Dots and Stripes collection by Echo Park Paper and I want to do a little bit of embossing today and if you haven't tried embossing this is such a fun technique for uh, wet embossing you will need either a Versamark or an embossing ink pad and you just ink up your stamp. This is a doily stamp from Hero Arts. I will link you to lots of other different um, doily stamps in the store so be sure to check those out and I'm going to stamp it halfway on and halfway off. Now the thing about a Versamark ink pad is you can't tell as well where you've stamped as you can with an embossing ink pad because it's tinted but I've gotten so that I can tell. This is some Zing embossing powder this is the mustard color and this is going to give me kind of a tone on tone and I just sprinkle it generously onto the place I've stamped. Below where I've stamped I have a folded piece of scratch paper and I just pull all the excess powder into that fold and just tap it right back into my bottle. And that's a quick and easy way not to waste any embossing powder. Now when you're setting embossing powder, what you need to do is you need a heat tool. Now these get very hot, so do be careful. And then you just heat the design. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's been embossed. And we're just gonna add this to the bottom of the paper. This is another way to stretch your sketch is by changing up the paper or by creating your own pattern paper. Now one thing I'll warn you about is that you can kind of see it sticking up a little bit. Using a heat gun will warp your paper a little bit so you might have to add some strong adhesive behind it. I've pre-printed the journaling like from the sketch. Um, I don't like my own handwriting. I know that may make some of you a little shocked, but I don't like my handwriting and every time I look at a page with my handwriting on it, I'm too distracted by the ugly handwriting. So I like to print my handwriting. Um, I know a lot of people advocate using your own handwriting and I just say do whatever you love and, and, and just make it your own. So I'm just adding adhesive and we are going to put this right here. And then I want to show you a tool that I've added to my scrapbooking arsenal that I have just come to love. These are Martha Stewart fringe scissors. And what fringe scissors do is because they have multiple blades, when you cut, it cuts multiple times at once. So see how it does that? And you just continue across creating a fringe could be cute as grass, could be cute as fringe. We're going to use it as fringe today, so I've pre-cut the border strip we're going to use. And we are going to tuck this underneath our journaling block. And this just gives the page some um, extra texture. Now fringe doesn't need to be perfect. Um, nothing really does need to be perfect and so I like to further distress it by just running my fingers up and down that gives it some texture. So one trick that I have that when I'm creating a page is that I this is where the title goes in the in the sketch 
And this is a sticker from an American Crafts Remark sticker sheet. And I cut around the sticker because I wanted to see if it fit. And that's just a technique that I use to mount and figure out if stickers are going to fit. Now, another technique I like to do with stickers um, is that I like to give them a little bit of depth on my page instead of just putting them flat. And so I like to use adhesive foam squares to kind of make them pop off the page. And you'll see me doing that a lot on my projects. It just gives it a little bit extra depth, especially when you have a thin sticker like this and I have the fringe beneath. It'll just make it too bumpy if I don't make it pop off the page a little bit. So put enough that it kind of sticks up a little bit and then just mount it on your page. And this sign is supposed to be a little bit of a diagonal, so that's okay. So let's dress up the ends with some brads. Um, I'll tell you another trick that I like to use is that I will often pick when I'm creating a layout a sticker or a piece of pattern paper that has colors that I like. And the entire color scheme for this page was inspired by this sticker. I love the tone on tone wood grain in the background. And then from the exact same line are some mini brads. They're about medium size, and these are from American Crafts. And I just love doing this, but I also like to mix lines, and I felt like the uh, Echo Park paper mixed in really, really well with what I have. Um, I have a paper piercer to do this. That's another tool I like to use often and frequently. So you just open up those brads. Okay, and then make sure your brads don't stick off the edge of the paper. So here's what we have so far. And now let's look at the sketch again. Um, I am drawn to graphic elements. Love the circles on this page. And there's lots of different things you could do to stretch the sketch. Buttons, flare, stamps. You could do an actual background cutout with your silhouette of circles. You could put photos here. Lots of different ways to stretch it. When you're stretching a sketch, you can turn it and you get an entirely new look just by turning it. You can flip flop parts, move this to the top and the bottom, lots of different ways to do it. But the way that I'm gonna do it today is just use buttons. Now some of the buttons I've pre-tied with twine. Twine is super, super hot right now and there are lots of different twine colors in the store. Some of these buttons I've tied with twine and some I have not. I think a page gets really boring if everything on it is perfect. So I like to have things that have some twine, some that doesn't. And that's how I like to kind of design my page is just balance through not being balanced. But that's my style, so you have to kind of figure out what you want. Something that might be fun um, to stretch this a little bit further is you could tie little word tags to these buttons. You could tie different colors of twine. You could tie ribbon through the buttons. You could switch out a button for a sticker. Lots of different ways that you could stretch this particular sketch. So just having fun and kind of making it your own. And I just am creating a grid. The buttons really don't have anything to do with the theme. They just add a textural element. And I'm going to add some town photo corners. This is kind of my signature piece. I love these craft colored photo corners. And we don't have them in the store, but your silhouette machine, you can download a cut that will cut photo corners. Okay, so here's our page so far. I'm going to dress up this sticker a little bit more. And I have these felt stickers from Pebbles that I think are just so darling. And you can dress up any sticker just by layering. Quick and easy way to kind of stretch the stickers a little bit. And it kind of covers up the words in my title. That's okay. I kind of like it that way. So you can continue adding tabs, stickers, and whatever else you want just to make it your own. Let's go over the sketch one more time to show how closely I matched. So we have a photo on the right, and I have this is a 4 by 6 photo. We have a grid of circles. I have a grid of buttons. I have the title here and the journaling here. 
Titling Care. And then I have a little bit of paper below, which I have down here. So I actually stuck to the sketch pretty well, except that I did an eight and a half by 11. So there are lots of different ways you can stretch the sketch. Be sure to check out the other designer samples in the class in our free class section at two peas in a bucket.com. You'll also be able to download a PDF with complete instructions and additional photos as well.